So five values for you, your work and your portfolio. So I consider all of this your portfolio. Number one, be inspired by everything. What I mean by this is literally be inspired by everything and not just the discipline that you're in. Um, it's a very personal thing, where, what you're influenced by. The smaller the group of influences, the more you'll subconsciously, without any control, start adopting that influence. It isn't really what you want to be doing. You want to be making a cocktail of influences and pushing through that your fresh version. I'll just show you some things that have influenced me. The first one is a three-minute video. It's someone talking head and shoulders. Sounds really boring, but I find this the most inspirational bit of video. That every time I watch it, I just think, wow, he's got in my brain and put on screen exactly what I think. Sometimes you listen to things and you think, I've only really had one idea in my life. And I've just been doing it in a hundred different ways ever since. That's a sort of slightly depressing thought. But then you, you can remind yourself that that was also true of Samuel Beckett um, and Miles Davis <laughs> and a few other people. I think one of the things that art offers you is the chance to surrender the chance to not be in control any longer. Now, if you think about it, most in our culture, most of the encouragement is to take control. What we like doing, and that's the reason we enjoy sex, drugs, art, and religion, what we like doing is surrendering. They're really all ways of losing me. They're ways of losing yourself. One of the things I want music to do is to offer people the chance to surrender. Everything good proceeds from enthusiasm. The sense of, I really want to know how this turns out, will drive you on through many, many long nights of no results. Um, whereas the feeling of, I think I ought to do this, dries up very quickly. The, the big mistake is to wait for inspiration. It won't, it won't come looking for you. It's not so much creating something, I think, it's, it's noticing when something is starting to happen. And noticing it and then building on it and saying, OK, that's new. That hasn't happened before. What does it mean? Where can I go with it? I, I often think that artists divide into um, the musical Oklahoma, the farmer and the cowboy. So the farmer is the guy who finds a piece of territory stakes it up and digs it and cultivates it and grows the land. Um, the cowboy is the one who goes out and finds new territories. I, I rather think of myself as the cowboy, really, than the farmer. Um, I like the thrill of being somewhere where I know nobody else has been, even if it's quite trivial, you know, it's only art. It's not very important, but nonetheless, I like the feeling of standing looking at something that nobody else has ever seen before. Obviously, there's an inequality of opportunities among people. Some people do have more opportunities than others. But there's also an inequality of readiness. Some people are more ready to make use of the opportunities than, that come up than others. Now, I, I studied painting, and this was in the 60s, at the time when pop music was becoming very, very interesting. And this new technology was coming into existence, the recording studio. I was fascinated by it. Partly, I think, because recording was a way of painting with sound. Similarly, new instruments were appearing, the synthesizer, which had no history. There was no correct way of playing synthesizers. So I got in early. I could play it any way I wanted. I didn't have to go and learn how to play synthesizer, but it was a choice. You know, I could have decided to learn the drums. And God knows what would have happened then. <laughs> Another bad drummer in the world. I remember meeting somebody from a German electronic band who shall remain nameless. And he said, um, he said, I am after the perfect sine wave. 
And the interesting thing is that the least interesting sound in the universe probably is the perfect sine wave. It's the sound of nothing happening. It's the sound of perfection. And it's boring, you know. <laughs> As David Byrne said in his song, heaven is a place where nothing ever happens. Distortion is character, basically. In fact, everything we call character is the deviation from perfection. So perfection to me is characterlessness. So even though he's talking about art and music, it still relates to everything that everyone in this room does. The idea of recognising when there's an idea that's worth pursuing, capturing it, not following the crowd, etc., etc. Now that's really our sort of deep, meaningful, black and white. Influence doesn't have to come from something so emotional. It could be as surface ridden as cool on screen graphics in a Hollywood movie. Whatever floats your boat. But these are three images. I read about five articles on just how they made all the graphics that go into, well, in this case, the Iron Man movie. And I'm quite a fan of retro. These aren't necessarily old posters, but they've all had that strong retro uh, feel to them, from everything from video games to controversy and anything in between. And part of that expansion needs to be uh, purposely made. Most, most people are in an internet bubble. So how many people here check social media before they get out of bed? Facebook, maybe a bit of Twitter, Instagram, if I remember it existed. That's fine, but you're really only then having an influence from people that already you have something in common. Where's the wild card? Where's the element that is actually something that you've never heard of before? Now, luckily, the internet is a wonderful thing and other people think the same way. And so there are aggregators out there that join together things that may be interesting. But again, you have to have multiple versions of that. I have a uh, set of web pages that at lunch, which 99 times out of 100 is sat over my keyboard. Um, there's a cool stuff list. There's about 30 web pages. I open them all up. And there's probably about 200 influences that I can chew upon over a period of 10 minutes, ch -ch -ch -ch, anything that captures me. And the idea back in the olden days, 1990s, that seems weird, people used to actually say, right, I'm now going to surf the web. Obviously, nowadays, it's just part and parcel of everyday life. But I think actually making a conscience, conscious decision to, right, I'm going to now spend an hour and find stuff is a really powerful thing. And it's really easy to do. You've probably got something in your handbag or pocket right now that can do it. When you find stuff, share. Start conversations. How many people here have started to follow me on Twitter in the last 12 hours? OK. There's one or two of you that have got quite interesting Twitter feeds. I do my research. So do you, obviously. Um, and that is an extension of your portfolio. Anybody that comes in for an interview, even if it's for an account, director or office manager, I will see what they do. So those of you that um, are engaged, did a bit of research, who has something to say to me? Anyone? Well done. You've just won yourself a book, my favourite book of all time. It's just infographics, it's gorgeous, and you'll fall in love with every page. Well done. See, so all you had to do is, who is that Jason Holland guy? Oh, I might look him up. I might check something out. So I'm not saying that, my God, don't you know who I am? Because you don't know who I am. I'm not some big famous ad agency guy. But you chose to come here, so maybe it might have been worthwhile figuring out, is there something interesting? Value number two, the God is in the detail. So in everything that you do, even ideas or something that's visual, when you think it's finished, you think, ah, that's good. But is that good enough? Surely everybody at DNA D show over the last three days has been showing really good stuff. How do you make it great? Partly is to do with yourselves, but partly is that detail element. This is only just one example of detail. It doesn't have to be 
interface that when you think something's done, let's do five things here and spend an hour just polishing something in there. And that is also something that whenever you show your portfolio or an idea or a design, you point those things out and suddenly you've got a hidden depth that is totally exposed in a positive way to a possible employer or person who's interviewing you. It's not surface level. You've thought about it. Look at the care I'm taking. Turn what you're opening up in your portfolio into a craft, not just a really good set of solutions. Number three, get noticed, be remembered, get talked about. There's so many different ways of doing this. I'll just give you a few that I've had. Quite often when I've been approached for a job, they have personalised it in some way. Done a little bit of research. Found out either something about the company or myself. At the very least, find out my name. The number of times I get to whom it may concern. Or a CV with no email content who has CC'd 50 people. It's like, oh, look at all those other people that have got exactly the same email. Delete. Ridiculous. Such a shame. There might be some real talent there, but it's not going to happen. But do whatever you do before someone else's. You know, sometimes you look at something, oh, yeah, I had that idea a couple of years ago. And somebody else has done it and they've got really famous. Everyone kind of in the creative world has those moments. Here's an example of somebody who created their own buzz. They saw something they didn't like. Microsoft had designed a new Windows logo. And his initial response was, that does not look like Windows, physical Windows, where I live. He said, no, my windows look like this where I live. And he spent, I think it was only about three or four days. This is only a small part of what he produced. Just implementing this new logo. Put it up on the web and asked for responses. He actually asked people, can you share this? He got hired. They paid for him to move to the creative team within Microsoft. And, I and that was a few years ago and he's actually a team leader now. Not bad. So it's almost like a flattery in a way that you're pointing out, actually, you did something wrong. People will want to listen to that because it's a sense of uh, your worth, sense of your opinion, and you're exposing your thought process. I've had experience of this too. I ha went through a portfolio, and the last page was a kind of an afterthought where they'd started to redesign something that uh, was both a home page and a mood board for an ad. And I said, Why, have you showed this to that brand? And she said, no. I said, do it. I, if you do one thing, promise me you're going to show this. Finish it and show it. She got a job. Sometimes it is really that simple. It takes a bit of effort and it's a big risk because you're investing something in something that's quite finite. Value four, keep up. So, okay, we had those social networks. Obviously, they've been around for a while now. What's next? What's after oversharing? Uh, what's in the next one, three, five years? You can guarantee it's going to have a digital element to it, no matter what it is. And the things that you actually do now that is a conscious decision to, I'm going to check Facebook, whatever mean, area of social media that is, it will just become part of your day-to-day -day life, just like you don't surf the web anymore. It's just part of what you do. So what is the future. You've got Internet of Things, it's kind of virtual world coming in back into the real world. It means a lot of things, as you know, it's a very broad concept. But that's one of them. It's a very small step. But for example, with this watch, I can control my thermostat at home. It's nothing special. Didn't cost that much money. Not many people are doing it, but it's there. It'll obviously take Google slash Apple to do something substantial where it then becomes more of the day-to-day. -day. And I guarantee in five years' time, you'll think nothing of the fact that something knows you're on the way back home after a very cold day and the heating comes on two hours before you get there because it knows that's how long it takes to come to your perfect temperature. So that's what's happening already. It will become day-to-day. -day. Wearable tech. Oh, well, obviously I've got one, but it's not going to be so obvious. So we're entering into an age where lots of people have got uh, health or sports orientated stuff that is on them with uh, various degrees of 
compatibility and information that's being given. But predicting what will happen is the key thing, in my guess. And remember, the brands, no matter what discipline you're in, will need all of these things, including this one, which I imagine most of you hardly ever touch. As soon as you get into a job, that's going to be a centre of all things, unfortunately. Don't forget that. Start using it. I remember a year ago, there was a creative pair that I saw in the portfolio of surgeries. Two weeks later, we had a brief. We needed a quick turnaround for two weeks. I emailed that pair saying, you will be right up the street for this. Do you want to earn some quick cash and do some work for us? Three weeks later, they replied. Sorry, I only just noticed the email. Don't really check it that often. What a shame. Value five, define your own values. Now these literally need writing down. You sit there, quiet room, and, and brainstorm about yourself. Now you have to look at yourself from a third person perspective. Some find that really easy, some don't. Ask someone to critique you in some way. And treat yourself as a brand. Find out what it is that you think is so great. Ask other people what possibilities there are to make you great. With the aim, of being famous. Go for that big goal. If you get halfway there, well, that's a bloody good job for starters. Work on it thereafter. So if you write down what you stand for and define it and set your goal, you then have a plan. This is even after you've started work. So the fact is that if you get that job, you think, hey, try and carry on with the other stuff. You'll be quite sad if you lose that personal flexibility of doing anything you want to do. And just work bloody hard to make it happen. It is hard work. But on the flip side, get ready to really take some thwack, thwacks around the head as far as your critique of your work is concerned. Everyone has a legitimate point of view. Just because I'm sat in Photoshop, say, or whatever, and um, a secretary comes up and says, ooh, no, I don't like that red. That is a perfectly legitimate criticism. The reason why is the bit of learning that I want to find out. So if you take criticism, try and start a conversation, ask why. If someone isn't willing to start that conversation, then you can probably ignore them because they're just being a troll. There's nothing more about it. Um, but here's a short video of something uh, you may or may not have seen before, but all of these are real comments from clients. Yeah, I was looking for something more uh, detailed and simple. I, I don't know. Something more clear and, and less sharp. Like, like soften the edges? Oh, I think you could just round the pixels and, and it'd be fine. Well, pixels are the small... You can't round them. And, and can we make this purple more royal? What do you mean? And these colors, um, what, did, what did you call them again? Complementary? Uh, yeah, the complementary colors, they, they don't seem to go together. <laughs> what are your brand colors? A purple, blue, and clear. Clear? Crystal. What? See, this is my fault. I was thinking less of a rectangle and more of a long square. Right. Well, this is just a mock-up. Once you sign the contract, I'll have a few more designs for you. I'm sorry, a contract? Look, a contract would just make me feel obligated to pay you. Just reviewing your designs, we were hoping for less of a dark gray and more of a light black. Next message. We're just gonna go with something my daughter found on Google. Next message. I took your mock-up home, uh, for my wife. My son. These two birds I was banging. The one that pees sitting down. My dog didn't really care for it. Can you help protect our site from viruses and sperm? I was wondering, can you make this go viral without infecting other computers? Did I hire you to be banned by what's possible? There is no deadline, but uh, we need it by next Monday. Could we pay you next week? Next month? <laughs> I have to pay you? <laughs> Instead of cash? How would I give you muffins? Free chicken wings, that's shenanigans. Gift certificate to Bed Bath 
and beyond. If you buy a meal. <laughs> huh? So get ready for that criticism. Right, your portfolio, your actual physical or virtual portfolio, your collection of work. So you need three portfolios, one on the web, a physical one, and a PDF for that moment, then somebody says, oh, can you shoot it over now? I've got a meeting in half an hour. You need it ready in whatever form. The one on the web, well, keep it simple. Your work is king here. Back in 1996, I designed the touchscreen kiosks for DNAD. And the brief was beautifully simple, intuitive, and that you don't notice while navigating the content. That's not a bad brief, it's bloody hard. But try not to do all whiz bang, 3D, you know, shove everything in to what is meant to be showing your work. Ensure it works on mobile. Make sure it's accessible and visible through a device while somebody's commuting, checking their emails, thinking, oh yeah, we'll add them to the list for the short list of interviews that we're going to do. And get your own web address. It's not that hard. People will do it for you, just pay them a tenner uh, and work from there. If you do want to do fancy pants stuff, then keep it separate and it's almost part of your work. So here's my CV and here's a really interesting CV. Make sure there's that option, but make sure it's that separate element. Your physical one, if possible, spend a bit of money on it. Money, I know, is the hardest thing in the world. Um, but if you get a decent one, it will last. The last thing you want is a first impression of thunk. A bit tatty around the edges, a bit of a crooked sticker from whoever you bought it from, etc., etc. This is a precious item. This is an all-or-nothing object. And it, it sounds odd, but if possible, avoid shiny sleeves. You, the number of times I'm doing this while looking at work, it just gets in the way and it, I shouldn't have any barriers as admiring your beautiful creations. And keep it clean and tidy. It can be a box of boards, it can be flips, whatever, but whatever it is, make sure it's immaculate at all times. And structure your portfolio content depending on who you're seeing. So you may have optimised it to, I think this is definitely the best way and, you know, what do I put first, what do I put second to last, all those key factors that will change depending on who you're seeing and actually your seven pieces this, these aren't exact figures I've just kind of approximated of work that you're showing should be from a larger set and it's really hard not to put these in really hard as you probably know but if you keep it down to the ones that you're most proud of that are relevant for who you're talking to that conversation will go deeper and it won't be a case of, oh, I've only got an hour, I need to get through these a bit quicker. And this PDF version, or whatever, obviously video and such don't fit on PDF, it's just TV, but if there's something that is an instantly available something. But make sure all your details in there. I've actually been sent links to a video and I thought, wow, that's really good, we could do that concept, blah, blah. I'm thinking, but how do I contact these people? Oh, uh, it was from an email that, oh, I'll do that later. Wow. I've been impressed with a bit of work and I'm not contacting them. Keep, it, keep that insight in mind. People aren't being rude when they don't get back to you. Some might. But most of them aren't. They just have 101 other things to do as well. Don't take it personally. But the easier you make it so that their call to action is get in touch, the better. And then your structure. You have no idea how the conversation will go while you're showing this portfolio in any of those forms. So you have to have a, almost a backup plan. A backup plan also for when you get a really dry throat and you get a bit nervous and you just go blank and you think, and the, uh, what was the brief for this one? It could, could happen, no matter how calm and collected you are. So with every bit of work, I personally would want to see a one sentence brief three sentences to describe the challenge. So why is that really difficult? And why your solution is br absolutely brilliant? Skip even the conversation of whether it's a good solution or not and go straight to the killer of why it's great. And this, almost for a creative-led DNAD expo, is a bit of a Debbie Downer in some ways, but financial elements. This is a weird part 
of my talk, but it's essential. Because if someone knows how they fit into the grander scheme of things, as an employee, I'm bringing you in. Of course, I want great work, great solutions, ideas, impeccable design or advertising standards. But the reason you're employed is so that I can make money from you being sat at a desk in the office. Acknowledge that. And that can be acknowledged in certain different ways. You can actually point out that your design solution is the reason it kicks ass is that look at the sales growth it will uh, give that client. Look at the brand recognition it will give, which will then lead to sales, etc. A lot of people forget about the actual goal of any brief, most briefs, which is to make somebody more money. The brand is advertising to sell more. How will your solution go beyond earning a DNAD yellow pencil into an extra $30 million of revenue for that brand. And that really is explaining your insight that puts you as part of the business and not just an employee within a creative. So what do we mean by insights? Well, it can take various degrees of insights. I personally get a lot from my planning director and he's sat there looking at data a lot of the times. It's a bit of a witchcraft black art to me. But what he ends up coming up with is real key information that increases the foundation of wherever my brief is coming from. But you think, okay, launch of a games console using a TV advert. Who, who do we advertise to? Who are the gamers, is what I'm saying. It's massive now. It's the last 16 to 35 weeks to get 18 games all over the place now, whereas 10 years ago, you were trying to do a teenage market. Exactly. But who are the gamers who will buy a £400 console? Exactly. The, the higher scale. The people like me, who you saw all that, those gaming, that gaming history, for example. As you can see, that's an increase of... this company. Xbox on. This is an invitation to a new generation. Go to Titanfall. Where your games and entertainment are no longer separated. Go to Star Trek Into Darkness. But together, in one. Xbox answer. Did you see that? This is an invitation from the all-in-one Xbox One. And as you rightly pointed out, not a single kid anywhere. Don't forget about mobiles. Everything is mobile-based. I, I mean, literally everything. We've got whole clients that mobile is first. So you are an extension of your portfolio. Know your place. And sorry, it was a bit, the financial bit is a bit of a reality check. But if I had someone in an interview saying, and I understand that you know, my work has to be so enthralling to the client that they will pay you to increase the amount of work that we do. It's like, yeah, you're absolutely right. Regardless of all the creative elements that we've talked about. And learn from criticism. I'm kind of summing up here. A friend of mine, actually helped make and starred in a short video. But I don't know if anyone's seen this. Kind of sums up your first six months in a job, metaphorically.
first I'd send the left hand corner, ECD and holder of six viral videos, five time run for free winner, Mr. Hutchie! So, what else? A few closing thoughts. Seek out who you want to work with and do that targeted element. Find out who you're writing to, please. Try and be a bit more specific. Look at the work and critique it. Even offer where it could be improved. Or tease so that they have to come and see what your idea is. Uh, and demonstrate your passion beyond college or university. Live everything, show that influence but show how your Twitter feed is full of inspiration. Smiling, that makes such a difference. Honestly, if I see a positive person, I think that's gonna rub off on my team and that, that positive influence is gonna overflow and make the room feel better, literally. And that will help, the positivity will flow through. If you're doing something you enjoy, you will always have fun. When you stop having fun, then you're in trouble. So as soon as there's a niggle of something that you're not sure about, talk, share, figure it out before it comes a problem. If anyone here wanted to take it further, even share or get some other advice, I'm fully contactable. They're probably the best ways to get me. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs>